Greetings everyone in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the first Sunday of Epiphany. We also celebrate the baptism of Jesus. This is the time for the church to celebrate how Jesus revealed himself as the divine Messiah to the world. There was a significant event in the gospel account in the Bible that revealed to us that Jesus went to the river of Jordan to be baptized. There are three things I will speak today about the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. Firstly, I will speak of the importance of baptism as the initiation rite to be a Christian and also enter the church as part of the body of Christ. A person cannot truly be part of the body of Christ if he does not participate in seriousness in the ritual of baptism. Secondly, I will speak about the difference between the baptism of John the Baptist versus the baptism in Jesus. In Acts chapter 19, the apostles imperatively told the people and disciples that the baptism by John the Baptist is insufficient. They must be baptized in Christ. And thirdly, I will speak about the importance of baptism as the power of the grace of God. This power of grace is more powerful than our sinful nature that constantly harden our hearts against God. Let me begin by using the illustration that we are familiar with, especially with all the cultures that require a ceremony or ritual to enter into a union or community. In all cultures, when a community or a union like a marriage who wants to accept a person into a serious commitment and bond of relationship, there is always a sacred ritual for initiation. I even see this in Boy Scout that when any persons want to join the Society of Boy Scout, they are required to go through a briefing or, and participate in a ceremony. Marriage is the most familiar ceremony and sacred ritual for many cultures. When two persons decide to have a serious commitment of union and participation in a new life together, there will be a serious and sacred ritual. Because all of this is a serious event and commitment to life. Therefore, my friends, how can we take the entrance and initiation of a sacred union with Christ casually? God demands our life to be fully committed to Him if we want to receive the promise of salvation and a permanent covenant with Him. It caused the sacrifice of Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God for us to receive this sacred covenant with Him. You see, the modern Western portrayal of relationships revolutionized the idea of sacred and holy commitment of a relationship or commitment to join a society. We can see this in Western films and television. Relationships and sex are casual. It is important to make each other feel easy with each other in, according to the modern eyes. Therefore, relationship and sex are meant to be casual. According to the Bible, this is seen as lustful and adulterous. Well, according to the modern eyes, if we invoke the Bible, it is condemnation and being judgmental. Therefore, the modern churches play down the gospel with a seeker friendly or non-holy way of worship or atmosphere. But it does not represent the Bible and the truth about the gospel. The ceremony of baptism is a serious and holy ritual that represents exactly what the gospel is about. It is about entering into a holy and sacred relationship with God. This is why the traditional architecture of the church often places the baptism pool or the font at the entrance of the church. Because each time a person walks into the church, they are reminded of the holy ceremony of their baptism or its requirement. It is true baptism that they enter the sacred church of God. And it is true baptism they enter into the holy communion with God. The second message I want to speak about today is the difference between the baptism of John versus the baptism of Christ. Because in Acts chapter 19, St. Paul found some disciples of St. John the Baptist uh, Please take note that the disciples of John the Baptist are also believers of Christ. John preached and taught that Jesus is truly the Lamb of God 
and the God sent Messiah for the world. However, the disciples of John the Baptist only learned about the baptism of John, not the baptism in Jesus. According to what St. Paul had found, the disciples in Acts chapter 19. The baptism of John the Baptist was not an unfamiliar ritual for the Jewish people. Baptism in the first century Jewish community until today is known as mikveh. Mikveh is water baptism for the cleansing of body and spirit. Therefore, it is not a strange idea for the Jews for immersing the body in the water as a cleansing ceremony. So, what John the Baptist did for his disciples was a baptism of repentance because it makes sense that mikveh, the baptism of the Jewish people, requires repentance in order to cleanse themselves of their wrongdoings, of their sins. But St. Paul asked the disciples of John the Baptist whether they received the Holy Spirit, which they did not. It was not because the baptism of John the Baptist was bad, but it was only sufficient for repentance. Repentance is important. But the baptism in Christ has the power for them to receive the Holy Spirit. Because baptism in Jesus is no longer the same as Jewish mikveh, which was merely a cleansing ceremony or a ceremony of repentance. The baptism in Jesus is a baptism for a person to regenerate and receive the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, a person cannot enter the kingdom of God. This is the salvation of God given to all who are willing to believe and be baptized in Jesus. This is the command exactly mentioned in Matthew chapter 28 that commissioned the apostles to make disciples to, of all nations and baptize the people, the, all the disciples, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Some erroneous teachings amongst the local churches believe that Jesus got baptized as merely a human and became God after baptism. I'm not sure have you heard of this kind of teachings. This is a classical heresy of Arianism. Jesus was God and has always been God. But Arianism believes that Jesus was the creation of God or the first creation of God. Jesus has always been God. He is not a creation. The Gospel of John affirms that Jesus is the Word of God and the Word of God was with God from the very beginning. So, the baptism of Jesus reveals to us that Jesus was truly God, incarnate as human, and revealed himself in the Trinity. You see, when Jesus was baptized in the river of Jordan, the manifestation of God the Father and the Holy Spirit was revealed to the public. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit manifested at the river of Jordan during the ritual of Jesus' baptism. When Jesus was baptized, Jesus did not baptize himself because he was a man and a sinner like us. Jesus is sinless. He is the perfect Son of God. We need to emphasize the perfection and divinity of Jesus because there is a growing heresy in some of the churches which are so slowly denying the sacred divinity of Jesus who is the perfect God and man. When we ignore and deny the divinity of Jesus, we ignore and deny the holiness of the church and the holiness of the Christian religion. What Jesus did was to institutionalize water baptism for us. So whoever gets baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is also baptized in Him. Let us not make this same heretical mistake of the Arians, especially that came from the early church. We should not repeat this kind of heresy. Friends, uh, there is no power of God in your life if you deny the power of God in your baptism in Christ. When St. Paul saw the disciples of John the Baptist, which John the Baptist was one of the greatest prophets in the Bible, St. Paul was urgent to ask the disciples of John the Baptist whether they received the Holy Spirit. Because the baptism in Christ 
will give us the power of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit in us, there is no salvation, no power to live out the will of God in us. And we will continue to live in the bondage of the world, the sin and the devil. When you are baptized and properly receive the Holy Spirit, even if you continue to ignore the gospel in your life, the Holy Spirit will come after you or somehow work in you. How many of us try to live a very sinful life and ignore the truth of the gospel in our life? Yet God continues to work in us through our baptism in Christ. Because the Holy Spirit is in us once we are baptized in Christ. Many of us might be grieving the Holy Spirit. When we grieve the Holy Spirit in us, especially after we receive Him in our baptism, be as a child or adult, God will still work patiently in us. God, in His Holy Spirit, will patiently work in us. Therefore, now I come to the third point of my sermon today. The baptism in Christ is the gift of grace in our life. Grace is the complete sovereign work of God. Grace is given to us not according to our merits, but according to the mercy of God. See, grace is not dependent on our worth or effort, but according to the sovereign mercy of God. Likewise, when we saw our Lord Jesus Christ baptized in the Jordan River, He did not institute baptism according to our merits and effort. In fact, John the Baptist felt unworthy to perform the baptism for Jesus. Yet Jesus immersed himself into the water according to his sovereignty and grace. My friends, none of us should doubt our baptism in whatever age or circumstances. It is not by our effort and the condition of our confession that baptizes us. It is by the grace of God we are baptized in him. Therefore, it makes sense that the early church until today allow an infant to be baptized to receive the grace for salvation and to receive the Holy Spirit. Some of us have been baptized as an infant because the grace of God has come upon your family and your parents decided to bring you for baptism. All this work according to the grace of God. I also would like to highlight there is another erroneous teaching going around the local churches to rebaptize believers. I popularly hear people wanting to get a second baptism or rebaptizing themselves. And they even accuse their parents of stealing their baptism away from them. This is the antithesis and contradiction to the teaching about the grace of God in the Bible. Modern people like to place a high grandiosity in human free will. Our human free will is greater than the grace of God. This is not according to the Bible. These teachings, in fact, were debated and condemned in the early church. There was a popular heresy that denies the grace of God and Jesus was merely a perfect human person sent by God to lead us into a good moral life. Sounds familiar, what I've mentioned earlier, just like Arianism. This heresy was known as Pelagianism. This teaching was so attractive, it leads people to deny the power of God in His grace. This heresy rejects the power of Christ in baptism. Today, some of the local Protestant churches are following this footstep of Pelagianism, denying the grace of God in baptism. They rebaptize people and reject the grace of God through the baptism of Jesus Christ. They feel that the grace of God is insufficient for their salvation. It requires us to do all the work. In other words, the grace of God is not powerful enough to save us. My friends, some of us um, might feel that there is a need for us to revive our faith and also to revive our heart for the gospel. Some of us want to experience more about the Spirit of God in us. We want to feel excited and more fiery with God. And we are misled to believe there is a need for another baptism in our life to experience it. A second baptism is not biblical teaching. The early church condemns a second baptism as a heresy for a reason. 
What we should do if we have been baptized in Christ and want to experience more in God, our expression or what we should do is to show gratitude, a gratitude of thanksgiving. The response to the gift of the grace of God is thanksgiving. When someone does something good to you, not because of our effort or merits, we should be thankful. And God gave us exactly this remedy of thanksgiving for us to continuously experience His power through the Eucharist. The Eucharist, also known as the Holy Communion, is the Greek word for thanksgiving. Jesus gave us baptism and also His body and blood to continuously experience spiritual life in Him. These are the, are the two great gifts that God has given us, the sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion. Friends, God has given us sufficiently His grace in our life. But I have mentioned He gave us two sacraments that will save us from our damnation. He gave us water baptism that will allow us to enter into a communion with Him and receive eternal life. And the second sacrament He gave us is the body and blood of Jesus Christ in the Holy Communion, or known as the, the Eucharist. See, the battle of false teachings is constant in the life of church because there is a warfare. We have an enemy who wants our downfall from the grace of God. It confuses us to feel that the grace of God in the sacrament of baptism and Holy Communion and also causes us to run somewhere else for God. All of this, we just feel God is insufficient in our life. You see, God has made us Himself so near to us with baptism and Holy Communion. And for us, we just need to show a life of thanksgiving to God. And indeed, we do want to experience that the Spirit of God in us, a fiery and passionate life in the Gospel. And whenever we are reminded about the grace of God in baptism and receive the Holy Communion, these are the things that God has given us, consciously or unconsciously, that His grace is sufficiently for us. I pray that the grace of God, which has always been sufficient for us, will come upon your life, and you shall not ignore Him and be thankful for Him at all times. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.